So we're going to put together the frame for the shad tank. We have two squares, one for the top and one for the bottom. The legs, again, have the same sort of markings. The bottom has one through four B. Each of the legs goes on the outside of the frame to allow a little bit more space inside for the tub to sit. And then your next leg, again, same thing, match up your 4B to your 4B, 1B to 1B. Everything's tight, so we'll get the top. And this is where it really helps to have two people working together on this. And then the easiest thing is to put all of the bolts in first and not worry about the wing nuts until you've got your bolts in, holding it in place. And then the same thing, put on washers on each of the bolts. And just check and make sure everything's secure. And we have completed the frame of the tank. Well, this is a great program for a number of reasons. It's hands-on for students with real fish, real living things that they can look at up close, that they can study, that they can take care of. So after you build the frame, you want to put it on the floor in the place where you want your tank to be, because once you fill it with water, you're not going to be able to move it. And ideally, that would be near a sink um, on hopefully a floor that is, is tile or something like that that isn't carpet, because there may be small spills as you go through this. First thing you'll do is put the lower reservoir, the red tub that doesn't have any holes in it, in the bottom of the frame. Then you'll take the large piece of plywood with a hole in it and put it on top of the frame. You'll take the upper reservoir, which is the big red tub that has a valve on the bottom and a drain pipe, and put that through the hole. Then you'll want to take the standpipe, that's the piece of two inch PVC that's got netting over it, and put that down over the standpipe in the middle. Then you'll want to attach the egg chamber to the side of the tank. You want to attach this opposite where the power strip is and to one of the flat sides as opposed to a place where it's bulging out. Tighten that good. The next thing I'm going to do is add the fry chamber, which is this clear tub using rubber bands. There's a rubber band around, a big rubber band around the standpipe that you'll put at the bottom of the fry chamber. And another one that's in the middle of the egg chamber that you put around the top of the fry chamber. And make sure that when the water runs out of the overflow tube here, that it ends up landing in the fry chamber. And then you'll want to add the whole the pump and the pipe assembly that runs the water from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir. Put the pump in the bottom. Make sure to keep the plug out. pump down in the bottom of the tub and then up through and into the egg chamber in the top. Our tap water has chemicals in it to make it safe for drinking, um, chloramines they're called, um, but they're not good for fish. They can kill your fry pretty quickly if you have um, chlorine in your water. And so there's a chemical, Chloramex, that you'll have that you can put into your um, tank when you start it going that will remove the chloramines from the water in the tank and make it safe for the fish. You'll also want to keep a five gallon bucket near the tank that has been treated as well so that when you top the tank off, the water level drops through some evaporation. You can add water from this, this bucket of water that's already been treated and add that to the bottom reservoir from your, of your tank. Every time you add anything to your tank, water, or ice, you want to put it in the bottom reservoir. Now we're going to talk about the siphon which is the tube that draws water out of the fry chamber and into the main upper reservoir. And the purpose of the siphon is to keep that fry chamber from overflowing. The way siphon works is that you want to get all of the air out of the tube. So what you want to do is put it all the way underwater and let that air bubble out. And then you want to move it around a bit to make sure that you've got all of that air out. Just don't make sure that it doesn't break the surface of the water. 
Then while it's still underwater, you want to cover one end with your finger. And I think it's easier to cover the end that does not have the mesh on it. And put the mesh end into the fry chamber. And that will be pulling water out of the fry chamber into the main upper reservoir. And if your siphon is working, the water level in the, the fry chamber should drop and be at the same level as the water in the, the rest of the tank. You can use the binder clip that's rubber banded to it to attach it to the side of the fry chamber. That'll help to hold it in place. And you also want to make sure that that filtered end is about one third of the way up that container so that it's not touching the bottom because you want it to make sure it can suck the water in and also that it doesn't bother the eggs or the fry too much. So if your siphon is working properly, the water level in the fry chamber should drop to the same level as the water in the main upper res reservoir and it should happen relatively quickly. So if it doesn't happen right away, you'll just want to take the siphon out and try again to get all of those air bubbles out of it. We have a tank that will provide the right conditions for the shad to hatch and develop in for the week that they're in the tank. It agitates the eggs so that they don't sit still, which mimics the conditions in the river. Um, and it provides a round container. The red tubs are round, the fry chamber is round, the egg chamber is round because when the fry hatch, if they swim around, they, if there's a rectangular container, they'll swim to the corner and they will die there. But the round allows them, the, um, they can keep swimming and swimming around, which is ideally what will happen. And they won't die because of the shape of the container.